Hey guys, you're welcome to WTSWGS. What they say versus what God says. My name is Muffin Kim, and it's an absolute delight to have you here. You're welcome. So today we'll be discussing the second part of the episode If I Hammer. Now, in the last episode, we saw that hammering or success is something that can only be defined within the ambit of God's purpose for one's life and not outside of it, right? And that everything else is a facade. Anything that is outside that purpose, it just looks like success. It's not really success. Now, there are two things that we must consider for the equation of success to be complete. One is opportunity, the other is preparation. Now, Ecclesiastes 9.11 says, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happened to them all. Time and chance. Now, those two words, time and chance, are translated in the Septuagint as Kronos and Kairos. Right? So time is Kronos, chance is Kairos. And the season of opportunity within which an opportunity is available and the specific moment within which a transaction is complete is what we call Kronos and then Kairos. And both of them are required if success is the aim. I like to call Kronos the time for preparation and Kairos the time of becoming in a moment, the specific moments that one becomes within a possible season. Now, Psalm 78 verse 72 says of David, so he fed them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. He tended God's sheep by the integrity of his heart first before the skill of his hand was recognized. But guess what? At the end of the day, his skill counted for something. It really did. It means that he prepared for that opportunity. So when it came, his heart was ready and his skill was ready. Now, Daniel, I like to call him the man of excellence, was spoken of in Daniel 6 verse 3 in the NKJV. It said, then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him and the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. Now he would not have survived four governments spanning across three different nations if he was not excellent. Politics in those days were brutal. If you mess up, you lose your head. But it says he and his friends, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were all excellent. Now you may try to compare yourself to others whom you feel are more opportune than you. But why don't you use that time to prepare for your own opportune time? Because if you spend so much time pining about your lack of opportunity, you may actually miss out on the opportunity to prepare for your own shot. It's the marriage of preparation and opportunity that births success. It is not a bastard. Now, it is the positive and negative Pygmalion effect that you see at play. Let me explain what that is. It's like you see and think that you are poor and unfortunate. Then you act and respond to circumstances like one who is actually poor and unfortunate. Thus, men, circumstances, and even systems respond to you in unfortunate terms. They see you as one who is unfortunate. And you keep thinking that you're unfortunate and so therefore, you know, it's just a cycle. It's a vicious cycle and you have to break it. They say fake it till you make it, but this is beyond faking it till you make it. This is about preparing for it till it comes. Properly conditioning your mind to receive what it is you expect. If you fake it, even when it comes, you will not be prepared for it and thus you will miss it. But if you take the time to prepare for it, you will grab it when it comes. What you're preparing for determines how you will prepare. It'll determine the methods, means, the tests and experiences that you have to go through to be ready. For example, if you're building a skyscraper, the foundation is pretty much different from if you're building a bungalow foundation or even that of a two-story structure. 
And then another thing you have to consider is that preparation differs for people across different areas of your life. Remember, we're not all the same. As much as we are one, we're not the same. Because we're not all planning for the same life, the same destiny or the same opportunity. Preparing to advise generations of kings may not be and will most likely not look like preparing to slay a lion or a bear. One requires deep study and wisdom, and the other must, of necessity, include physical training. Otherwise, he will not make it. Now, God knows what you're preparing for and what you need, and he will guide you as required. All you have to do is follow his leading. Now, it may not make sense at that point, but when that skill is required and it comes up, you will understand the importance of that training and you'll be glad for it. Now, imagine David faced the giant with nothing but good vibes and good intentions. Papa will not make it. Now, the battle may have, you know, been a different story. Oh, he faced the giant. He was brave, but he died. You see, but when he faced Goliath, he drew from the strength and training he had received in killing the bear and the lion. It was not the same thing, but it was a stepping block for his faith. You build it from strength to strength. He said in 1 Samuel 17, 34 to 36, he says, And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went after him and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he had defied the armies of the living God. Oh, hallelujah. Now, it would have been possible for God to help him defeat the giants, even without these experiences. But in this case, God chose that that is the method he will use. Now, God, I like to say, as much as he is a God of miracles and signs, he's also a God of process. And any process you try to skip will be your undoing. So what is that thing God has been nudging you in your life to work on? Follow his leading and you will not be disappointed. Pray, study the word, build your faith, talk right, walk right, act right, dress nice. Good things will come to you. So imagine a good per- something was looking for you or an opportunity was looking for you and the person missed you because you simply did not look like the job description. Say, ah, don't judge a book by its cover. Charlie, you're not a book. And guess what? People will judge you based on how you look. It's an unconscious bias. So what I'm saying in summary is that success or hammering or hitting it big is dependent on the process to which you subject yourself. Paul said to Timothy that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. 2 Timothy 3.17 So determine that you won't just hammer you will become all God wants for you to become. May God help us in Jesus' name. So we've come to the end of today's episode. If you were blessed by this message, don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section. Please reach out to us at the email in the description box. It's WTSWGS at gmail.com and we'll get a copy of Apocalypsis to you for free. You can follow the previous episodes on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts. Subscribe to the channel, guys. Like, like, like it. Leave a comment and forward the link on all your social media handles. Thank you so much. Bye.